Uh, we are so glad that you joined us today. We are absolutely sure that you are going to learn a lot about resumes. And uh, before we get started, I want to go review our agenda for the day. I'm Diana Doggett, and I'm an Extension Specialist with the University of Kentucky. And the first thing we're going to do today is welcome you, which we have. We're going to talk about success stories. Of course, we have our main speaker, Ray Claire, and we are sharing our active job leads. So be thinking of those if you want to um, share with our group today. We'll have partner updates, and then we will tell you next time at Job Club. What is the mission of Job Club? It hasn't changed over the last nine years to provide a positive environment for job seekers to attend and learn best practices for the job search. We meet on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month, and you can get the schedule of topics at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. So be sure and check that out. Again, I am Diana Doggett. Uh, the rest of our team is Caroline Francis, Director of Alumni Career Services at the UK Alumni Association. Amanda Shagney is the Associate Director of Career Services. We also have Nicole Waite. You'll be hearing from her later, an employment specialist uh, at UK Steps, temporary employment. And we also want to uh, uh, welcome some new members to our team, Christy Kaufman and Lindsay Cahill as well as Suzanne Smith and Sunny Saylor and Queen Sullivan. So thanks so much for everything that everyone does. It takes a village to produce Job Club. Job Club is currently hosted in a hybrid format. And that means that we have people here in person at the Fayette County Cooperative Extension Office. And we welcome anyone that wants to come. Uh, we stay afterwards and network. Uh, there's a lot of lot of one on one uh, discussions that takes place. So please remember that we are live at, at the Fayette County Extension Office, but we also are providing job club on zoom webinar and in that format chat moderator is available. So we welcome your discussion, your questions, um, inquiries, anything that you want to share. Please do that in our chat box. And the third opportunity is Facebook live. And this is view only, no chat moderator or job lead newsletter uh, can be given to those, but we, we really want you to enjoy that as well and share that with your friends if that's your, your mode. Um, we have um, an opportunity. You can see our whole list of wonderful topics that we present twice a month. And perhaps you couldn't attend one or you couldn't get online to join that session. Um, you can review those recordings at, again, our website, www.alumni.net slash job club. So go to that site and you can see all the past um, sessions. And uh, I'm sure that, that you will be very benefited by that on array of subjects. We want you to um, take notice that we do have a, a resource packet for job club. It's free. It's online at the same um, website. And we have the job search uh, Q&As there. We have informational interview tips, resume review checklist. Just you can see uh, those of you that are online in, in person, just an array of information that you may need at one specific time and can't wait to, to the job club session. So please check that out. Um, and in addition, we want to remind you that the Central Kentucky Job Club LinkedIn site is active. Uh, all the time. And we're putting job leads on there in the interim between the two weeks. So you will want to um, join, be online, be the first to know about uh, job leads that we've just heard about and sharing also um, article updates and opportunities for you to leave and learn more about the job search. Employers and recruiters are always welcome at Job Club. Um, In-person employer, employer guests have a one-minute spotlight to share their active job leads with the group later in the program. And if you're online, just raise your hand and we'll give you that same opportunity. Uh, watch your email later today for a job leads newsletter 
that has been sent and shared with the job club team. And uh, there will be, again, a lot of information, but specifically job leads that we have just heard about. So you'll want to get that newsletter. We are also uh, very mindful that some attendees are conducting a confidential job search. So let's please be respectful of privacy for the job search of them. Um, check out job search related articles that are, are, are included in our job club reminder emails. We wanna welcome our first timers. Do we have any first timers in the audience? And I think we do. So welcome, welcome. We're, we're extremely glad and, and that you checked out the in-person uh, version of Job Club. What about online? If you are a first timer, please indicate that in the chat box. We'd love to know it. And let us know where you're from. We just, we're really very curious um, to know the outreach of Job Club. We know it's expanding uh, each and every session. So let us know where you're from. We'd love to know it. And while you're there, let us know what, what job area that you are looking in. We'd like to know that as well. That's very helpful to us. Well, if you are a first timer, you will receive a follow-up survey later today. And this feedback will place you in our notification system for future programs. So you can either scan the QR code on the screen or you can visit uh, the website that's listed. All right, we have um, success story period of time. It's always a very exciting, rewarding, uh, encouraging time is to hear successes. And we don't have a formal one to share today. That's very rare that we don't, um, but we, we do not. But we want to hear from you on, in the chat box or maybe in our live audience, anyone that has succeeded in some area of job search, of their job search. Have you updated your resume? Now, after today's presentation, I am, I'm expecting a flood of, of successes where people have gone back uh, and either developed or revised a, a resume. So we'll, we'll hold on that one. We know that that, that that will be the case. But if you have had a job interview, perhaps you have um, may looked into a, your networking, you reached out to someone in your formal uh, employment, just let us know what has worked for you or what, what step have you taken forward in your job club? Any online comments here? We'll be sure and do that. We want to see that. All right. We're going to get started with our presentation. It's my uh, a delight. He's no stranger to Job Club. We are excited each and every time that Ray Clear presents. He is um, the director of the Stuckert Career Center at the University of Kentucky. And Ray, we're just thrilled that you're here. And what a timely uh, message on resumes because we're getting lots and lots of uh, requests for that. Welcome. Thank you, Diana. Good morning, everyone. Good to be with you today. Um, happy summer. I think we're officially in summer now, and it already kind of felt like these last few weeks in the Lexington area. Um, I want to give a warm welcome to all those here today in Extension and to our online audience. So glad to be with you all. Um, I do always look forward to this topic and talking with this group. Um, one quick guidance note is I am asking if we could, uh, questions are welcome today, but I'm going to try to hold questions until we get near the end of the slide deck, uh, just because I, I found in previous uh, presentations that can kind of go down a, a rabbit hole with some questions and, and divert from, from getting through all of our content. So for our online audience and for those in here in the room, if you have questions, please write them down, make note, or if you're on, online, enter them in chat. And we'll catalog those for the, uh, the last part of the session today. So that being said, um, let's see here, want to talk about resumes. And, um, you know, we, uh, I think when we were marketing this session, we talked about uh, the resilience that resumes have had as far as being essential in the job search. A lot of people predicted over the years that we'd be adrift into LinkedIn alone or that maybe um, profile builds on job sites would take the place of resume. 
but they've proven to be really, really resilient as far as still part of the process for most applications and most, most job searches. So I wanna to talk today about a lot of things related to resumes. But I wanna stress one point just at the beginning. Resume writing is, it's really categorically, it's uh, technical writing. It doesn't come easily um, really to any of us. It requires a lot of practice, a lot of focus. So you think about like when you learn the parallel park or when you've uh, done anything that's like repetitive, it takes practice, it takes some precision and time. And so you get more comfortable, you get better at it over time. Just to give you a quick analogy that I, I like to kind of um, underscore that this is meant to be a safe place this morning, a place you can ask questions and, and share concerns you might have. So my aunt and uncle, um, they live uh, along the coastal plain between Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina and Wilmington. It's pancake flat. It's a very rural area. And my cousin, uh, Sarah, uh, when she was learning to drive, it didn't come easy to her. She was struggling initially with driving tests and all that came with that. And my uncle is quite a character. And so what he did was um, for practice driving, he took Sarah to the local cemetery. And his rationale was, everyone's already dead here, Sarah. You can't kill anyone. You can go and maneuver around the cemetery and not be in fear of hurting anyone. I'd say today is the same way. You guys are welcome to ask questions as we move through. And um, we'll, uh, we'll, it's a safe place to learn. So that as preface, here's our agenda this morning. Content I'd like to, to cover. Um, and um, I'd say the biggest difference between giving this presentation this morning and last time I gave this is the focus you'll see me give to applicant tracking systems. You'll hear more on that in a moment, but I'd say that's probably the biggest uh, change from the last time I delivered this presentation to the group. But we'll talk on each of these sections, and uh, I think hopefully this will be good content for everyone. So really defining what a resume is and what it's meant to do is where I want to start. Um, again, it's technical writing, putting your document together, and it's really a marketing tool. It's something that you're using to kind of um, raise the attention of the hiring manager, the human resources team, and kind of get on their radar as a potential candidate for position. Um, it's also a bit of a writing exam. It's assessing how you can write succinctly, uh, kind of tightly in the course of one or two pages in most cases, and how you organize your thoughts and how you organize your body of work and knowledge. So um, it's also that critical component in the application process. So applicant tracking systems, ATS for short, um, you hear a lot in computer science about binary processes. So uh, the idea of it's either this or it's that, and there's no gray area. That's really understanding applicant tracking systems. That's how they function. Now, if you've been an applicant for a position with a mid-sized or large company, you've probably applied through or had your information reviewed by an applicant tracking system not primarily in use by small businesses and smaller organizations, nonprofits, but uh, in most cases, mid-sized to large organizations, they're widely in use. And effectively, it means if it's a robotic or um, artificial intelligence system that's scanning your resume and it's trying to um, review it initially for the hiring manager uh, before it goes to them. And so what are they looking for? You'll see on screen here that among the most important features you'll want to be mindful of are keywords from the job description. And it gets highly, highly precise. So maybe you on your resume currently have keywords that are close approximations of what the job description calls for, but not exactly. In most cases, you'll want to update your resume so it reflects those keywords exactly, just so that it runs through the applicant tracking system and it pings it as a check mark rather than a strikeout. Um, similarly, titles, um, jobs that you've had, uh, it may be that um, it's subtly different, your current title or title you've had in the past. Um, in some cases, what you'll want to do is you'll want to include your current title, uh, forward slash, and then the title that's listed on the job description, and uh, want to be above all be ethical in all of this. But again, it's so precise in terms of how it pre-screens resumes 
that you don't want to be eliminated from consideration because you don't have the exact wording. Um, ATSs are really looking for simple layout. You'll see in some of the succeeding slides, we talk a lot about, um, you know, we're taught primarily in, in um, United States and a lot of Western nations, we read top to bottom, left to right. Applicant tracking system is functioning the same way. And so normally I'll discourage job seekers from using a lot of uh, columns, a lot of, uh, if you're using a lot of tables in your resume, that type of formatting, that can be a problem or an issue when it comes to an ATS. Um, you'll hear me at different points today talk about reverse chronology when you're talking about education you've had, work experience you've held. And that's really what, uh, in most cases, the ATS is seeking as well. So starting today and going back in time. Um, category titles, um, when it comes to like work experience and education and other things, best to be very straightforward. And that keeps it on track for the applicant tracking system. Um, acronyms or any types of abbreviations can be a concern. Best to spell it out in most cases. Um, if you have skill areas, licenses, certificates, those are good to highlight. Uh, you'll see me talk a bit later about sans serif fonts. You know, you go into Microsoft Word or any um, publishing software, there's just, you know, thousands of fonts you can choose from. So there's a certain class of font that are known as sans serif, and they are usually really good for applicant tracking systems, but they're also really good for on-screen viewing, probably better than um, more traditional fonts. So we'll talk about a few of those too. And then um, document file type. Um, you know, when you're applying for uh, with a small business or nonprofit organization, I'm often going to recommend a PDF because it, it uh, basically locks in your formatting and it doesn't change it when you send it via email or other means. For the, for the applicant tracking system, I'm going to often recommend Microsoft Word type because it's, it's a bit safer. Um, you've heard me already talk just a bit about what to avoid. I'll just mention the, the third category there. Um, pictures and graphics, um, that's true just generally of resumes that we don't include those items. So there's other areas like portfolios and other types of systems where you can capture that, but not on the body of a resume usually. And then formal uh, headers and footers, normally you're gonna caution against that in many cases. Um, if you have a multi-page resume, it's okay to have a brief footer with your last name and page two, page three, but um, in most cases, you don't wanna have a lot of content in a header or a footer. So, um, We'll also be a big, big red line for um, to steer you away from online resume templates. I think they are really good for practice. They're really good when you're on the job market trying to identify what type of way do I want to format my document. Great for that. Not so great when it comes to actually submitting a, um, a file through a application system. They're also somewhat limiting when it comes to your formatting. Um, you don't want to be too locked in depending on where you are in your career as far as how you organize your categories and things like that, templates are kind of bad in that respect. So I can generally caution you against those for your actual final document. And then resources that you're gonna really lean into when it comes to preparing your, your resume, not just for applicant tracking systems, but just in the main. Uh, the job description is just so fundamental. Um, you know, when I talk with job seekers, especially alumni and people who've been out of school for a number of years, and they tell me maybe the challenges they're facing. A red flag I'll look for in talking with them is they tell me, you know, I've sent out, you know, 100 or 200 resumes. I'm getting no response. So hearing that initial um, scope of, of their outreach, I'm thinking that's probably too many resumes and not a targeted enough search. You know, you were really better served to slightly reformat your resume for a lot of your opportunities and pursue those on an individual basis even though it takes more time and it takes a bit more attention, it usually pays great dividends. So we'll talk about customization. Um, the company or organization website's another great resource when you're thinking about formatting for your document. And then you're a personal network. Um, people you know, and especially people who might uh, currently be employed or uh, be associated with the organization you're applying to, those are great, uh, great resources. So um, when we think about resume content and what we want to include, we've talked about job description. Um, we've talked about the power of networking and company websites. 
Um, one thing you'll want to definitely highlight are key responsibilities and requirements um, that are reflected in those, those sources that make your resume in many ways the solution to what they're seeking. So you're trying to kind of position yourself as the answer to um, their job posting, their uh, talent search. And so to do that, we kind of go through this in a more scientific way. I like to use the analogy of human anatomy and vital organs and core content for your resume. So when you think of the human body, you think about our heart, our lungs, our liver, our kidneys, all those vital organs. Same thing can apply in most cases to resumes. It'll vary across individuals, scope of experience, all those factors. Some people who are new graduates, they'll organize their content differently than somebody who's more early career, mid-career, late career. But in many cases, um, there are some key sections that you find across these uh, job seekers. And those are the ones I want to really key on this morning. So on screen, you're going to see those first four or what I would term in most cases, really the vital organs or the most important content for most, um, most individual resumes. The additional categories you see near bottom of screen, that is where things get a bit more um, individualized and um, it'll vary much more across job seekers. I'm gonna kind of go just in the normal order of what we see in a resume and um, have some examples to show you throughout. Uh, contact information is fairly straightforward. I'd say the biggest developments with this are um, movement to including like a LinkedIn uh, hyperlink um, and uh, making sure that um, if you wanna include a mailing address, just thinking about um, what market you're applying in and where it makes the most sense. Are you local? Are you currently at a pretty great distance from that market? What are the pros and cons of that? But all this information you see on screen, your name, your mailing address, phone numbers, um, email, and uh, again, LinkedIn are, are information you wanna include. Um, I'd say for anything, whether it's LinkedIn or personal web pages, just make sure the content is up to date and appropriate for um, your audience. Um, likewise, uh, this might seem so basic, but um, making sure your voicemail recording is one that you'd want uh, a hiring manager or a human resources professional to hear. And so if it's more of like a family greeting, um, you may want to just consider whether that's appropriate um, for a, a hiring manager to call you. Here's an illustration of what this might look like on a document. And to my point earlier about applicant tracking systems, you don't really want to include this as a document header. You want to put it near the top of your document, but not as a header, just so it doesn't uh, confuse the ATS system. So again, pretty clean, pretty easy to follow. Um, we use some formatting to call attention to certain things, making the name larger, um, hyperlinking the email, and um, in many cases, hyperlinking your LinkedIn uh, handle. Objective or summary statements. This is something that can be important depending on where you are in your career. It's also something that's optional. So um, my general advice on this is you always wanna ask that operative question, is the objective statement necessary? Do you need to really spell out why you're applying? Or is it pretty clear from your body of work experience, your education, your skills and training, that you're already uh, well aligned and a good candidate for this role? If that's the case, you may not need to have an objective statement. Um, if you choose to include one, I'd say just try to avoid being vague, um, steering clear of statements that really say nothing substantial about your goals. Something like seeking a challenging position with potential for growth and advancement. You know, that's something that's true, I think, of almost all job seekers. So it doesn't really say anything about the candidate. These are statements that, um, in brief, just say a bit more, and I think you're more targeted for what you'd be looking for. So they're citing industry or area of focus, and they're talking about um, where they see themselves growing in terms of their career. Now, an alternative to an objective statement, and this is something people who are more mid-career, late-career, 
is going to be a summary statement. So an executive summary or summary of experience. And this often takes the form of a category um, with a header and usually um, you know, four, three to four bullets um, is sufficient to really focus where's been the main body of your experience, your, your work history, where's it concentrated, what have you done or achieved? Um, and for the reviewer, it's just helpful as a jumping off point to say, okay, I, I feel like I know this candidate now as I move through the rest of their resume. I know at a high level where a lot of their experience and skill areas have been focused. And you'll see me return this morning throughout to the idea of where you can quantify like that last bullet uh, citing um, uh, projects of budgets of between one to three million. You know, it's always helpful to quantify and provide numbers or um, any type of analytic uh, reference points. Now, again, if you're using human anatomy and the human body is the analogy, um, probably the, the closest thing we have to a heart or the, the key vital organ for um, the resume is going to be experience. Um, so experience often consumes roughly two thirds of your document or more. And it may be you've had a career that's been across multiple industries or sectors of the economy, and you need to focus a little bit on each of those. Um, I do think sometimes subdividing your experience can be advantageous. You see on screen examples of healthcare experience, marketing experience, research experience, sales. Um, to circle back to my point earlier about applicant tracking systems, trying to keep it simple is the kind of the line you're walking. So in many cases for an ATS, you want to have just a work experience or professional experience category and have everything in there. Um, if you're not applying to that scale of organization where their ATS is being used, you might be able to use some of these subcategories on your document and, um, and be fine. I would say that um, for purposes of inclusion, full-time, part-time, temp work, volunteer work, it's all fair game. So all those things have relevance and um, are eligible for consideration and including on your document. Um, Reverse chronology, so going most recent and back in time is really what the order you wanna go for. And you'll see an overall focus on accomplishments and skills developed, not just timeline of where you worked or what you did. And we'll talk more about that. Here's an example of what an experience section, uh, one, one entry in an experience section might look like. Again, you see that formatting uh, kind of clean, simple layout, uh, top to bottom, left to right. We're seeing the organization name, location. We're seeing the, uh, the dates of employment. We're seeing the uh, person's title. And then we're seeing three bullet points, each of which start with an action verb and briefly summarize um, what they accomplished or what they were responsible for in that employment. So something like this is many cases going to serve you well when it comes to resume organization. So when you think about that previous slide and how it was set up, I wanna just walk you through briefly how we, how we do that when it comes to your experience and what you've done. So when we think about types of bullet points, um, the weakest generally are the ones that just include those duties that you executed they don't talk about what you accomplished. They don't talk about skills developed. They're just a basic, basic summary. So the better bullet is one that shows skills developed. The best type of bullet statement is an accomplishment statement. Um, you want to be mindful of verb tense, especially as you're updating your resume and thinking about who it's going to go to. You know, are you currently employed at that organization or should it now be past tense? Just making sure that's all current, up to date. Um, Want to avoid, at most cases, uh, weaker statements like duties included or responsible for. It's not active language that really um, is going to uh, resonate with your viewer. When you think about those action verbs, um, you know, uh, we have different resource documents at the, the UK Career Center that you can access through our website. Um, and you can find these online too but really like a bank of action verbs for resumes organized by skill area is helpful for most of us. 
Um, I look at resumes a lot as part of my work and, you know, coach people on this often. I can assure you when I update my own resume, I get writer's block. I have a hard time thinking how I want to project or say what I did. And I go back to this like bank of action verbs and say to myself, what's the best way to describe that project or that initiative I was attached to? What's, what's the best way to define it? So it's helpful. Um, an accomplishment statement or a bulleted statement that really is an accomplishment. At heart, it's a story. And so it's capturing your skills, results and impact of your work, and your role in the, in the project or in the, uh, in the work. So going uh, kind of top down, in this case, we're gonna choose coordinated as our action verb. The project or activity that we coordinated were, was uh, three fundraising events for local shelters. Uh, the impact of that work or the result was that we raised more than $8,000, which exceeded project goals by more than 20% and improved community awareness. We bring it all together and it results in coordinated three fundraising events for local shelters, raising more than $8,000, exceeding project goal by more than 20% and greatly improving community awareness. So something like that is how you kind of compartmentalize or pick apart uh, a bulleted statement or accomplishment statement. And I think that can apply to a lot of uh, your content on your resume for your work experience. Education is another important section. Um, again, that rule of reverse chronology as far as timeline. So if you're currently in a degree program or pursuing additional certifications or, or professional uh, training, start with that and then list what you did before that, whether that's a bachelor's degree, um, uh, associate's degree, wherever you were before that, and you'll go back in time. Um, Ageism and concerns about that in the job market are real. So you're not required to list a graduation date. It's something that in some cases you may do, but um, if you're concerned about how that might play with your reviewer, then it's okay to omit that. Okay. Um, chances are when you get to like a resident or an interview format, they're probably gonna ask you about that, but you're already in the interview and you're already in a more advantageous part of the process at that point. So um, nothing wrong with uh, taking that strategy, that approach. Uh, you see at the bottom of the screen here, kind of an example of what part of an experience or uh, sorry, education section might look like. And so again, like hierarchy, we have our institution name, location. In this case, we listed graduation date. Then we have the college or area that you studied in, your degree title, uh, minor certificates, in this case, they were a strong student, so we list the GPA. In many cases, general rule of thumb is if you're in doubt about listing your GPA or not, 3.0 and better will say it's usually a good look, it's advantageous. It's below 3.0, you might want to omit it. And again, it's not to be um, in any way um, uh, untrustworthy or anything like that. It's just to say that you don't want to be taken out of consideration before you have a chance to um, they look at the rest of your work and what, you, what you've done. So um, GPA can always be provided later. Additional sections on your document. Um, depending on who you are and what you've done in your career, um, any of what you see on the screen might be in play. Uh, I generally think if you're gonna have a skills section, um, I'm, I'm strongly gonna encourage you to only include skills that are tangible, that um, are more of a technical uh, variety. If it's more of soft skill variety, I'm gonna encourage you to blend those into your accomplishment statements in your experience, um, because it's really hard in a skills section for people to know kind of a strong leadership. Well, what's the evidence of that? Or um, strong interpersonal skills. Those things just don't play as well in a standalone category. So if you have language skills, like you have um, advanced proficiency with Spanish, or you're able to translate, transcribe documents in Spanish language, that's a great technical skill to have in a skill section. Likewise, any kind of IT credential, whether it be Microsoft or um, online programs, those are great for a skill section. Um, I'd say that's less true of, of uh, the more soft skill variety. Um, so you have lot, a lot of uh, credentialing, you've been a uh, presenter at conferences, you've done different research or projects, um, project manager, that kind of thing. 
those are great qualifications to include in a resume. And some of you have been very active volunteers in, in your communities. In many cases, that, that content will be really important to list too. I mentioned earlier just a bit about formatting and the uh, font type. So what you see on screen are some examples of the sans serif font style. Now, I like these for a variety of reasons. One is, so the most common resume uh, font type by far is Times New Roman, and uh, Arial would be a close second. Those, I think, are just a little bit tired, and they're used so much, they don't really have a nice contemporary look. The ones on screen here, more, more so like Calibri is the default font on the current version of Word, um, Garamond, uh, Tahoma, Verdana. Those are great in terms of a bit more contemporary look. They also look really good on screen versus um, in print only. So I think there's advantages to, to these font styles. Document formatting. Um, default setting on Word is usually one inch or one and a quarter inch margins. That's a lot of margin, a, a big space around your document. So we want to reduce that, bring it out. So really you want margins that are about a half inch to three quarters of an inch. You want to really aim for a font size. It's about 10 to 12. Those font types you're looking at will influence what font size you pick. Some um, font size, font, some font types, a 10 point font will look really, really small. Others, it looks a bit better. So you really want to mix and match some there. Um, formatting wise, you'll see in samples, we use bold, we use italics, we use underline, we use all caps to draw attention or mark like a category header. Uh, the key with any of that is gonna be consistency. If you've uh, put your education category title in all caps, you wanna do the same for your experience, the same for your skills, the same for your volunteer work, um, but be consistent above all. Um, likewise, with your font you choose, it's best not to mix fonts. So whichever one you choose, you wanna really use it for the whole body of the document, not one font for you know part of your document, another font for the other part. Be consistent. Um, you heard me mention earlier, like document type, as far as when you upload or send it, um, usually a Microsoft Word or a PDF. The, the big uh, concern about Word is if you're using a different version of Word than the uh, person you're sending it to, it can reformat content. Um, this is less of a concern when you're applying through a company um, applicant tracking system than it is if you're sending it over email. If you're sending it over email to like a hiring manager or somebody in your network, I'm usually gonna recommend uh, the PDF version because it locks in formatting and it just makes sure that nothing is, um, everything is as it looks on your end as, as it looks on their end. And then some final key points, things to do and things to avoid. Um, really above all, you want a clean format is easy to read scan and makes good use of your document margins and all of your what we refer to as real estate in the document. Um, you want to really focus on that information that's relevant to the employer. I mentioned earlier the importance of a targeted search. Doesn't mean you can't cast a wide net, but you want to really look at every job description and try to tailor your document and your materials to that. Um, we want to stress our, our emphasis on accomplishments and skills developed rather than simply duties performed. I want to be mindful of verb tense and make sure the document's up to date. I um, want to use those action verbs and uh, really uh, make it a, a very well-written, tightly written document. And always, always want to have a trusted peer or professional proofread for spelling and grammatical errors. You do this yourself, but there's some danger there. Again, using my own resume development as an example, I look at resumes all the time. I can look at mine on the screen. I assure you I'll miss something that somebody else who's not seen my document before will capture right away. So for grammatical and um, uh, spelling typos, it's really, really good to have another reviewer. Things to avoid. We generally want to omit personal information. So this can get kind of gray as far as what falls in the personal information category, but generally um, political affiliations, um, faith-based or religious um, preferences, um, anything related to uh, those can be a, a kind of a, a third rail when it comes to resumes and what's uh, 
how it'll play with your reviewer. Um, you see in a lot of the references I provided this morning, we don't use personal pronouns in those accomplishment statements. So it's again, it's more technical writing. Um, you're writing more in sentence fragments, which is how you do this. So you don't use I, me, my, um, and other uh, pronouns. Um, we've given the cautionary advice earlier about templates. So again, I'll say resume templates are usually something you'll want to avoid for your final document. Good for practice, not so good for your final version. Um, and abbreviations, slang, or jargon, if in doubt, spell it out. Make sure that um, it's easy for the reviewer to know the organization you're referring to. References. So oftentimes they kind of go hand in hand with a resume. Um, I'm going to recommend they not be part of your core resume. They shouldn't be part of the resume document. Um, they're usually a separate sheet. They usually have a heading that's very similar to your resume heading. So your name, your mailing address, your phone, your email, all that information. And then you list off your references. And everything you see on the screen here is information you would include. Um, I always caution it's really important to check with those references before you list them um, for professional courtesy above all, but also for some very practical reasons. Could be your references is getting ready to travel um, out of country or you know abroad, and they might not be readily reachable. Um, that's never a good thing when you've uh, applied for a position and the employer is trying to follow up with reference checks and can't reach someone. So it's really important that they be aware and uh, approving of you listing them as a reference. So I always recommend checking with them. And that is uh, the end of the formal slides that I had this morning. Uh, again, happy to field questions from folks in the room, folks in the online room. Um, floor is open. Let's see a hand here. You put in your experience uh, in separate sections, manually enter it aside from submitting your resume. Why would that be necessary? Yeah, yeah. So the audio there was just a little bit. I'm going to repeat his question so everybody knows it. His is a good question. He's asking in some applicant tracking systems or online hiring portals why um, they're asking you to manually input content into different sections, maybe in addition to or instead of attaching a resume. That's, that's the question. It's a good one. So I think about a big one like the federal government, usajobs.gov. If you apply to usajobs.gov, they're going to ask you to do a manual profile build as part of your application. Um, the answer here is that it's just it differs across platforms. Some of them are um, are just going to you know use that more scan technology. Others are going to um, require it be embedded manually in the in the form. And there's no real rhyme or reason. It's just um, it, it varies across these platforms. Um, I think the key rules, though, that we were talking about this morning still hold, whether you're manually putting it in there or whether it's an attachment, is do be mindful of keywords. That's probably the most important thing I'd stress to the group. And uh, try to uh, make sure that um, there's no, um, I guess, fancy formatting. Um, plain text is the way to go um, in, these, in these situations. So good question. Other questions? An online question. In recent years, the advice has been not to include addresses on your resume. Why do you say um, to add your address? Yeah, so I think some of the, the, the debate on that one has been maybe about um, personal information and um, how much do you want to um, make available to an organization you're applying to. I generally think um, the benefit of including it outweighs any risk or concern about uh, personal information. I do think it gets more complicated when you're maybe applying out of market. So um, let's say that you're based here in Lexington and you're applying for jobs in the greater Chicago region. Um, for a um, personnel manager or HR professional, they might, as part of their initial um, Kind of screening of applicants, they might say, we only want people who are regional. We don't want to consider people who are out of market. So in that case, listing your mailing address, it set you back. It was a disadvantage. 
Um, so I think that's the most important factor to consider. Um, you know, the fact is that in almost no case will any job seeker get something through postal mail anymore when they've applied for a position. It's almost always going to be email exchange or a phone call. So um, the mailing address is more courtesy. Um, it's less practical. Another online question. What about Gemini for review? Can you say that one more time, I'm sorry. What about Gemini, G-E-M-M-A-R-Y for yeah. review? Yeah. Grammarly, no. maybe? Yeah, so that's that's a site I'm not familiar with, that resource. Um, I'm, I'm glad the question comes through because I do think there's it's a very active space right now as far as technology and tools that are available to job seekers. One that I really should have mentioned that I, I like to, to point people towards is one called JobScan. So JobScan, um, it's a subscription-based model, um, and I'm often going to recommend you just use the free version. But uh, basically, you'll upload your resume and it will do a simulated uh, applicant tracking system review, and it'll let you know on a percentage scale of zero to 100 percent how you did as far as applicant for the position you're applying for. I think it's useful. I was taken aback when I uploaded my own resume and um, did not score very high, and went back and retooled it using keywords and other things, and and did much better. So job scan is one I would recommend. Uh, Jimmery is one I'm not familiar with. I have to say. Um, but there's a lot of good tools. It's a, it's a rapidly evolving space. Other questions this morning? Okay. Well, um, I do appreciate this chance to be with you all this morning. Hope the information provided is helpful. And, um, you know, if you are a student at UK or one of our alumni, the UK Stuckert Career Center uh, is available to our, our graduates up to one year after graduation. So um, always make a point of mentioning that. And um, I'm wishing everyone well, wherever you are in your career stage, um, and hope you can achieve your goals and have the support you need to reach those. So really appreciate this chance to be with you all this morning, and I thank you all. All righty. So thank you again for that awesome presentation. And um, just to uh, reiterate for those first timers, the uh, video for today will be available soon. So if you want to check that out on the um, ag web page, I'm not going to say the web page, but on the Facebook page live that the video will be available soon. So let's see here. Oh, sorry. One back was here. All right. Are there any questions in the audience at all? I don't know. I know we've already asked that, but if anybody has any questions, I don't know. Okay. All righty. Don't want to miss that opportunity. So who's hiring? Okay. Uh, employ employers, I should say, with active job leads, please make your way to the podium now, or you can stay at your seat, whichever you wish, and email us job leads by 12 p.m. today at UK Alumni Career Center at uky.edu, and we'll include them in our post meeting. But um, I know that we have, uh, actually, we have about three here today. So uh, let's see here. We have uh, Claire and Keith, I believe. Would you guys like to speak a minute about something that you have available? Yeah. Um, good morning, everyone, and thanks for having us here today. My name is Keith, and I'm with the FBI. And today we are hiring for our FBI special agent position, which is our law enforcement position. Uh, full information for that can be found on our website, which is fbijobs.gov. Again, that's fbijobs.gov. There you'll find the full job description, along with the application process details as well. For any questions that you may have, you can feel free to reach out to us at louisvilleapplicants at fbi.gov. So it's all one word, louisvilleapplicants at fbi.gov. And we'll be hosting a recruiting event in the Louisville area for special the special agent position. That'll be coming up at the end of July, 
And so we will share the details with the job club and we'll get that information to you all in the uh, job club newsletter as well. And if you have any questions regarding the recruiting event, you can also reach out to us at that email address um, as well. All right. Okay. Thank you. And then we have, um, is, is it Carrie Hensley? Hi, Carrie. Okay. From the Career Center. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, speak to uh, <laughs> I was just going to pitch the professional staff side. Um, we also have job openings available across the United States and that. Um, constantly check our website at fbijobs.gov. Um, they'll be opening and closing periodically throughout the year. And then anybody who's graduated within the last two years will also open up the collegiate hire. Um, and that opens up typically in August. So be checking for that um, to apply for any jobs. Thank you so very much. Okay, now we'll speak with Carrie. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Carrie Lee Hensley, and I'm with the Kentucky Career Center, and I'm here today. Uh, I always watch Job Club, and y'all do such a good job. Uh, so I want to commend you on that and just offer uh, more help and assistance to those that are job seekers. Um, again, we are with the Kentucky Job uh, center and we are located on Research Park Drive in Lexington and we'd be glad to assist you in resume writing. We have workshops and all kinds of things available. So just check out our website at kcc.gov and uh, stop by and see us. Thank you. Thank you. And we also have Samantha Klein, that is, okay, from Debris Catering and Events. Hi, um, thank you all for having me today. Um, I, I have a little bit of a different direction, I think, but um, my name is Samantha Klein. I'm from Dupree Catering and Events. Um, so we're an all-inclusive catering company located here in Lexington. Um, we are looking currently for servers and bartenders. And um, what is really interesting about our company is um, we certainly have our full staff members, um, those that are um, working full time with us. But um, also we have an opportunity because we're a catering company to be very flexible with positions. So if anyone's looking for supplementary income or um, if they're a student in school currently or in transition between positions, we're a great company for that. Um, we are, um, uh, I, I feel like we're a great company. I came out of education and went in. other people in your industry, but also um, have an opportunity to, to gain that supplementary income or transition income, as well as um, having, you know, something with us for a full-time position. So um, if you're interested um, in applying to us, DupreeCatering.com is our website. Um, I'm also happy to give you my business card. All right. Thank you. Oh, okay. All righty. The newsletter. Okay. Awesome. All righty. So yeah, we'll include um, all of the um, jobs mentioned today and all the information listed today on LinkedIn. So be sure to look out for that. And I did want to ask if there were any um, employers in the chat. Um, if we have any, I should say, that are watching, feel free to put that information in the chat box and we'll share that also. All righty, let's see here, Job Club Facilitators, News and Programs. Of course, we have our, our great Fayette County Corporate Extension Office. Um, so we want to remind everyone to check with your local extension office for workshop and volunteer opportunities. Each of the 120 offices include, included right here in Fayette County are offering educational workshops, services, and resources. Uh, you guys feel free, of course, to check those out. There are different classes, uh, especially this time of year. Gardening has been really popular. Um, many, many things, many skills. All righty, and once again, I'm Nicole Waite with the University of Kentucky Human Resources, Human Resources, sorry about that, and I work in the steps department, and so we have many job opportunities available right now, and so I'll just list a we'll bullet point a few uh, key positions that are open right now. Uh, we have a research study recruiter position that's actually based in Louisville, Kentucky. 
Uh, we have a university events technician or uh, like someone have uh, experience in audio and visual support that is needed. Administrative services senior in our graduate school and admin payroll HR support. Uh, and plenty of patient relations and medical assistant positions on the healthcare side. And we also have a heating and cooling operator and many, many more. Those are just a few, but I, I will have these um, jobs posted later with the requisition numbers and the deadline for to apply for those positions. Alrighty, and of course we know about our UK Alumni uh, Career Services and which job club is. So uh, you guys feel free to visit these, um, I should say the, uh, Links um, provided right there, UK Alumni Career Services Programs and Professional Development uh, Book Club and Career Counseling Services. And uh, Ms. Amanda Shagney or Carolyn, uh, they're both out today, but they would be more than welcome to help you with any questions that you may have about resumes or interviewing. Already, and of course, next time on Job Club, take your job search for a reactive, from reactive to proactive, I should say, presented by Mandy Connolly, MPA, MPA GCDF, Talent Development Coordinator here at UK, effective job search strategies in a quasi post COVID world. Of course, we all need to know more about that. So, learn to find positions you actually want and create opportunities for connections to find unlisted openings. Online attendees, register there at the link below. And of course, feel free to come in. We do, well, that's already been mentioned, but we do have the hybrid format available. And of course, Facebook Live. So thank you all again for joining us today on Job Club. I'm pretty sure you got a wealth of information and we'll um, look forward to seeing you next time.